Hello and welcome back to the Glenscope channel where today we are taking a look at a Twitter thread from former undercover Hamilton police officer Paul Manning. And we're going to take a look at the actual twit longer version of this, which is a little bit easier to read. Want to know what happens when scores of officers from several departments get caught using and dealing steroids? In 2009-10, I was approached by an informant, Steve, who wanted to tell me of cops at my service using dealing steroids. I didn't put them on the books because I just didn't trust anyone. Because it was against cops I knew kept... I also kept my investigation off the books, spending my days off watching cops hang with my main target, Reiner Ruska. And if you don't know who that is, that is this guy. He was jailed for five years for trafficking cocaine and anabolic steroids, as well as, you know, the money from those from trafficking. Spinning around in half million dollar sports cars after a few months, Steve came with further intel that a Toronto cop was also selling Glocks to gangbangers. Background revealed this cop worked in the armory, meaning he could easily write off parts, rebuild a gun at home, and sell it. This forced my hand and I put together an intel report, submitting it, and I checked within a week the Toronto cop had been moved out of the armory. Now, cops like losing or, or, or having firearms stolen is actually reported quite often. This was a Freedom of Information Act by, in 2019 by Dennis Young. There were 640 firearms lost by RCMP. Again, this doesn't actually cover Ontario because they have their own police service. And 173 firearms were stolen from police. Now, I don't know how you lose 640 firearms, but that's like, they don't just walk off, is what I'm trying to say. Moving along, Steve approached me again asking to become a paid agent, but specifically asked me that he'd not be handed off to two cops who would kill him if they found out he turned. I handed him off to Intel, who in turn handed him off to those specific cops. In 2011, one of these cops ordered me into a meeting. I didn't want to talk because I knew the project, now named Project Newton, had still to be taken down, and I suspected this cop of involvement. After 15 minutes of threats and violence, he disclosed Steve had shot himself. I kept quiet. When done, I went to the incident report and read the statement of the cop and found Steve. He entered the scene, cleared the gun, and placed it in the back of his cruiser. Cops reading this know you don't do that. You don't leave the scene for homicide. And if you ever watched anything from CSI, then you know you can't actually adjust the scene, right? If you find a, a murder scene or potential murder scene or someone dead, you have to have it cleared. And this solo cop went in and basically contaminated the entire scene by removing the murder weapon. This cop, well, coincidentally, this was the second cop Steve said would kill him. Project Newton was taken down and resulted in the seizure of numerous drugs, but most importantly, $3 million worth of meth. I waited for news of pending cop arrest and just one, a cop who was already on his way out for stealing drugs from evidence. Then cops from my service started to approach me. The first denied everything and told me he'd be informed I was the rat. The second admitted everything and told me how stupid he'd been. Also told me someone from Intel had told him I was the rat. Okay, so who is Paul Manning? Well, it turns out he has a wiki which makes this a lot easier. He was actually born in England and he has previous undercover experience and a recent immigrant to Canada, which actually makes him a perfect undercover agent here because he has no history here in Canada. And he was assigned to actually infiltrate the organized crime in Hamilton. It's extremely tight-knit and very dangerous. And he was to gather evidence and all that stuff to be used in a future trial. So he spent over a year living in the community, engaging in criminal acts. His cover was consistently tested. He was a victim of an attempted murder and would be subject to mock executions in an attempt to ascertain if he was an undercover police officer. But in late 2016, the operation was compromised due to an intelligence breach suffered by the Ontario Provincial Police. Now, he actually launched a lawsuit against the Hamilton police officers because he was allegedly he was sold out and that the operation was intentionally compromised and disguised that fact. He described the un uncovering and reporting of years of criminality on the part of serving and retired officers. 
Okay, now here where it gets a little bit weird. On May 28th, 2016, a story which mentions Manning's lawsuit was published in the Hamilton Spectator, indicating criminality on the part of a senior investigator at the Hamilton Police Service, who subsequently killed himself. This investigator is not only mentioned in Manning's lawsuit, but the story somewhat corroborates what Manning alleges and directly accuses senior management at Hamilton Police Services of covering, covering up wrongdoing. On February 14th, the city of Hamilton were ordered to pay Manning $20,000 because of unnecessary delays. And then again in September 17th, uh, 2019, they were, at, they were told to pay another $40,000. So the lawsuit is still ongoing. Anyway, let's go back to the Twitter thread here. So he went on that everyone involved had been given written warnings for trafficking. I went to Intel and this was confirmed by my source. That means cops caught trafficking had a note applied to their file, which is very odd because you have basically known cop drug dealers. And instead of being charged, they're like, all right, this cop may be a drug dealer. And that's on their internal police like PR file. It also means police chiefs from several services from Toronto down to Niagara conspired to hide trafficking offenses committed by subordinates, a criminal offense in itself. It was 2012 by the time I ID'd the supplier, another cop of course, pointless telling my bosses, but someone made in a non-call to the US Homeland Security and police constable Purdy was arrested leaving the USA with steroids. And that's actually this. Niag Niagara Police Probe Steroid Drug Allegations Within Rank. And we can see Constable Jeff Purdy, decorated 13-year veteran of the force, former police instructor at a local college, a number of frontline officers within its Fort Erie, Ontario detachment have also been reassigned. So it seems this is a systemic issue within the Ontario Police Service. And by the way, who is actually the head ranking guy in Toronto at the time? That'd be Bill Blair, who is the current safety minister of Canada. During that time, uh, Chief of Police, Toronto Police Service, April 25, uh, 2005 to April 2015. There you have it. Hundreds of officers trafficking, using an unwittingly but subsequently assisting in the supply of meth, destroying our cities, shielded from scrutiny by numerous police chiefs and lawyers. And to those police services, if you don't want me calling you out on your criminality, stop behaving like criminals. Oh yeah, and for the naysayers, all the services involved in this report had officers dealing drugs. And uh, I actually showed you a couple of those uh, items there. And that's it from me, guys. If you like this video, um, you should definitely check out Paul Manning because without him, we wouldn't have the whistleblowers out there calling it out on the Ontario Police Service. You can check him out at Moblin Infiltrator. Please like and subscribe to this video. I'm always looking out for new and important things, not just firearms related topics. And I will see you guys in the next one.